Okay. So good morning, all of you, and uh, welcome to Robu dot in. My name is Priyanka Dixit, and today, twenty fifth March, twenty twenty three, on the occasion of Arduino Day, we have arranged the free workshop on Arduino for those people who are interested to learn about the Arduino microcontroller. Basically, the purpose behind this free workshop is to provide or to introduce the basics of Arduino microcontroller. And uh, as you will work in a real work project, so this workshop will definitely help you to develop your critical thinking and pro problem solving skills. So also you will learn in this workshop how to use the Arduino, what are the various applications of Arduino, and uh, how we how to interface this Arduino with different types of sensor. So without wasting any time, we just start with our workshop content. okay so uh, at the last uh, we will cover interfacing of electronics modules with arduino here we will take some examples of sensors like uh, ultrasonic sensor ir sensor and we will uh, learn how to interface this sensor with the arduino board then we will uh, in, uh, interface some modules with the arduino and we will check that how the arduino will work in that project and definitely guys you will have some questions related to this workshop related to this project then you can ask the, uh, these questions in in our q and a sessions and we will try to provide the best answer for your questions so just start with our first part what is arduino day and why is arduino day being celebrated so guys this is nothing but the birthday of arduino board the this celebration has started in 2014 um, and now it's been a 10 year so basically it's a 10th anniversary of the first launch arduino day celebration and uh, since then you can see that arduino has been grown grown up and after 10 years this is one kind of event and this kind of uh, one kind of global celebration and it has been celebrated in more than 100 countries the purpose what is the purpose of this celebration so purpose behind this celebration is that bring together the community worldwide community of arduino makers arduino users uh, who can celebrate and showcase their ideas achievements and projects also basically it is a one kind it is a day to recognize and promote the arduino id platform arduino platform uh, so people can use it as a tool to interact and create their innovative electronics devices electronics projects so this is the basic purpose of this celebration overall agar hum kisi ki baat karne matlab is celebration ki baat karne jate hain to it is a celebration of community then it is celebration of innovation it is a celebration of a creativity and uh, definitely it provides a opportunity for people of all the age group and backgrounds to learn and participate in the exciting world of arduino day we we are a indian indian distributor of arduino board so uh, from robo dot in this is this workshop is a small kind of contribution to the worldwide celebration of the arduino day so guys uh, we have one questions for you just you have the answer for it then please uh, mention it in a comment section the first question for you is that who is the founder of arduino board we will wait for your answer yes harshad savant savant has replied to our answer that massimo banzi yes yes harshad this is the uh, founder of the uh, original arduino board so start with the next slide what is a microcontroller basically everyone ha everyone has seen the microprocessor because it comes in our computer it comes in our uh, cpu but what is the difference between microcontroller and microprocessor basically microcontroller is used for heavy computational task means it is used for high levels of data processing and it is also one kind of chip but it needs the external hardware like input outputs so then peripherals then you have to connect the memory externally but microcontroller is a small computing chip where all the input output peripherals then uh, 
any hardware you will require memory it is inbuilt in that chip so will not you will not require any extra hardware to code into it or to program into it and basic the main advantage of this microcontroller is that it's a low power operated device means uh, basically it is a battery operated device because of uh, these facilities microcontrollers are used in embedded system like uh, medical devices in vehicles in most of the microcontrollers are used in a consumer electronics product so let's start with the arduino microcontroller what is arduino microcontroller basically it is a open source hardware and plat- software platform where everyone can come everyone everyone can make their projects you can program here and you can upload your product program into your arduino board and you can complete your project so it is a very user friendly pa- platform why it is called a open source basically the hardware and software designs are already available on arduino, arduino platform means uh, hardware e you, you you want to make your own arduino board then you can download its hardware design you can make it at your own the first thing is easy to use yes it uh, miss it uses the c and c++ language that's why it becomes very easy to understand for the beginners and to make the code into the arduino platform and uh, this id is uh, id platform is uh, freely available for available for everyone so you can easily code into that the second thing is affordable the third one is large community and support arduino has a very large community and active community uh, of users or of makers or developers so they can show their ideas they can show their projects and definitely they can help to each other so if you have any issue with the arduino project you can directly co- contact to their platform and you will get a better answers and better idea for your projects also so you will get a better support for this platform last one is a wide range of applications arduino can be used in a variety of applications means you can uh, see that arduino applications arduino is used in robo- robotics ap- application then it is in, used in industrial application it is used in medical science then it is used in uh, music industry art industry so there are variety of applications so these four things make it popular than the other microcontroller for the beginners so guys we have just covered the introduction of arduino here uh, just let me know one uh, thing that other than arduino microcontroller do you know other microcontrollers like uh, have you learn about it in your college or have you seen any other microcontroller in market so just tell me the name of that microcontroller in comment section yes 8051 microcontroller we all uh, have learned this in a college other than 8051 do you know any other microcontroller yes bhargav it's 8051 yes raspberry pi pico Yes, SP, S, ESP32 PIC microcontroller. Yes, there are many more microcontrollers are available in market and you can, uh, but Arduino is a very easy to use than this other microcontroller. yeah pixoc is also microcontroller but uh, it is yes it is one kind of flight controller also node mcu r microcontroller atmel 8 raspberry pi pico stm32 esp we are getting this information in comment section avr yes uh, yes guys you are right there are multiple microcontrollers are available So let's start with the next section. Arduino family. So basically, it is a types of Arduino boards. And uh, in two thousand seven, the first Arduino board was launched. 
and uh, now you can see that uh, in 20 uh, 23 there are more than 100 hardwares of arduino boards are available which includes board shields carrier boards number of kits are available so basically arduino has divided their boards into three major categories first is nano category second one is classic category and third one is a mkr category so we will see one by one what is nano category it is in its name only nano means small so basically the microcontrollers has small footprints and definitely it has a features also so if you have seen the nano family microcontroller you will get arduino nano arduino nano ble so all these are from the nano nano uh, family all these microcontrollers are from the nano family so latest nano board has been launched is a rp2040 actually uh, this board has the inbuilt wifi and inbuilt radio module and uh, it supports for micro python language as, as well as machine learning like language also this latest nano family board has a uh, inbuilt sensors like uh, pressure sensor uh, then uh, gesture sensor temperature humidity and microphone many more sensor are included in this latest board so guys you can if you can start with this uh, nano family also i have some board from the nano family so this is the arduino nano board you can check that i have this one for the usb type but uh, this arduino nano comes with the mini usb as well the second one is a classic family basically uh, the boards of this classic family is a very popular boards and uh, this family includes the board of arduino you know arduino mega dio leonardo so all these for the classic family this family is useful for the all beginners and uh, for from arduino family uh, these family boards are most successful boards till now and uh, uh, it is a basically backbone of the arduino platform so i have two boards from the classic family first one is a arduino uno you can see that and the other one i have arduino mega next family is mkr family basically uh, this is advanced level family uh, means uh, you can make uh, amazing products uh using the boards of this family and the most important thing of this family is that you will not require any additional hardware to make any project using these boards all the boards of this mkr families are equipped with the inbuilt uh, radio modules rather than means except mkr 0 so these radio modules enables the wifi iot then sigfox then uh, bluetooth so all these features are available in this mkr mkr family also uh, this family use the crypto chip for the secure communication and uh, the processor used in this mkr family is a low power processor so power consumption of this family products are very less so if you want to make the advanced projects then you can go for the mkr family these are the this uh, distribution of this family you can see that in nano family uh, there are multiple boards like uh, i have just mentioned the boards here uh, there are shields also there and there are carrier boards also there and there are pro mini boards also there so i have just mentioned the few of them in in this nano family you can see that nano every uh, nano every is the inexpensive board from this family this classic family you can see that you know mega leonardo duo micro zero and in mkr family you will get 1000 wifi 1010 then fox 1200 then gsm 1400 so all this family is available in mkr so if you want to learn about all this microcontroller then you can directly visit to arduino's website they have mentioned about each and every products in their uh, family section so directly you can visit their website for more detailing about this product we have a time limitation guys so we will go to the next slide sorry okay
Okay. So I have one question for you guys. When was the first Arduino board was launched, and what is the name of that first launch board? Please uh, answer it in a comment section. Okay, I will tell you the name of that uh, first board. Uh, it's a Dyson Miller, and the, this board has been launched in 2007. This is the first board of the Arduino family. So next, start with our. So these are the basic specification on uh, of Arduino. You know, uh, it uses Atmega 328P, a microcontroller which is 8 bit. It operates with the 5 volt uh, operating voltage. You can provide this uh, 7 to 12 volt uh, as a operating voltage, but for controller it will require the 5 volt. And it it has a six analog inputs. Means uh, you can connect the sensors here. Then uh, 14 digital input output pins. You can connect your output as well as input to these 14 pins, and out of 14, six are PWM outputs. and the operating current of input output pins are 40 milliampere and when you will use a 3.3 volt as a vcc then it will be the 50 milliampere it has a flash memory of a 32 kb sram of a 2 kb eprom of a 1 kb and it provides the clock frequency of a 60 megahertz so this is board description basically so we have choose the arduino you know board because this is a user friendly board for everyone Just start with the USB connector. You can see that through this connector, we can upload the uh, we have to upload the code into this Arduino board. Uh, you can use the data cable type A to type B to upload the code from computer or comp uh, laptop. Also, it is used to power. Uh, miss, you can power up the microcontroller using these uh, portals. Then uh, you can provide the power supply. Means 12 volt power supply or nine, you can connect the nine volt battery through this barrel jack as well. There is one five volt regulator is given. When you you will provide the nine volt or 12 volt through this jack, it will convert convert into the five five volt because this controller requires the five volt only to operate. This is the main controller IC. It is a 28 pin IC, 8 mega 328 p controller. It requires the uh, language. Uh, Means uh, this is the USB to TTL converter basically. Whenever uh, we are providing the data from this USB, then it will convert into the TTL language, which is understanding language for this microcontroller. It is uh, then uh, it is a Atmega 16U2. Basically, if you want to program uh, this Arduino board from any other programmer, then you can use this pin. Also, whenever you, you will get a data from this programmer, then this IC will convert this data and provide the data to the microcontroller. You can see here there are fourteen digital input output pins, then six analog input pins. So you can connect your sensors like RF sensor, ultrasonic sensor, then any other uh, analog sensor here, and uh, microcontroller will proceed on that. You can, if you have any digital input output, like I mean, suppose you want to interface your LCD, then if you want to interface your motor, then you can interface at this point. You can see that uh, there are uh, two capacitors. Capacitors are given here, which is used to filtering purpose. Means whenever we are providing the supply from this jack, this is used to filter the uh, power. Then polyfuse is given for the protection. Then uh, here you will get a protection diode also. Then uh, this is LM358. These are the tra transmitter and receiver LEDs. This is the 16 megahertz crystal. Uh, crystal generates the clock frequency to uh, provide and uh, provide it to the microcontroller. Basically, clock frequency is required. Uh, to operate uh, some instructions uh, code in a proper time frame and because all the uh, instructions will be uh, is working on the time cycle only so this uh, crystal oscillator provides this frequency to the microcontroller here we have completed uh, all the hardware part of the arduino board so we just start with the id part before starting the id part we just want to know which uh, which country is the origin of the arduino board 
if you know the answer just uh, mention this answer in the comment section okay what is arduino id so basically it's a integrated development environment and it is a software platform of a uh, arduino uh, in using this platform we can write our code we can compile our code and we can upload this code into our arduino board it includes a code editor compile and serial monitor for debugging and testing the code this id platform is very useful uh, very uh, easy to interact because it uses the c and c++ language so we will see that how to download it and how to install it in your board okay so basically uh, i was talking about the software installation of arduino id uh, you have to directly go to the website arduino.cc and uh, here you will get a software of this arduino you have to just click on that uh you can see that it's a 2.0.4 is the latest version of this arduino id i have already downloaded loud uh, downloaded this 1.8.19 and uh, this software is available for windows linux and mac os so you have to just click on this and just download it so if you will click on it it will be download in few second so i have already installed this software in my pc i can show you so you can see that in my pc already arduino software software is installed so i will open this this is a 1.8.19 version so this is the structure of the arduino id so we will learn what is included in this structure so the basic of this uh, arduino id you know that it has predefined codes means arduino id comes with the predefined codes means uh, there are uh, few example codes are already available in the arduino id like a uh, basic course blinking code then digital output code then if analog output code controlling codes so all these codes are already available in this arduino id but if you want to interface any other sensor then how you will code into that so you have to install the library for that because to run any sensor or any module you have to provide some commands and arduino id uh, don't know that about that command so you have to install some libraries related to that sensor from online and you can install it in a arduino id so we will see that how to install this library so again i will download some library suppose i am going to download library of ultrasonic sensor so on github i will get this library i have to download this zip file see this file has been downloaded so now we have to upload this include this library into the arduino id platform so this is the sketch here you can see the option include library and add zip library in the download section this library i have selected open oh, see you will get this message after uh, successfully in, uh, including this library library added to your libraries check include library menu so i can check this menu whether i can see this see this library is successfully updated now so this is the basic process of a library installation so the next part is selecting the board and the com port if you are going to upload the code then you have to select the board and you have to select the com port properly so now i am going to show you how to select the board this is the arduino microcontroller i have see you can see that so this is a type a to type b tech cable so i am going to connect it to the Arduino, sorry, laptop. 
see the board has been detected now i will show you in the stool so in the board you can see that i have selected arduino board arduino you know board if i will connect the arduino mega then you have to just go here and you have to select the arduino mega Pips. guys we are facing some issue so we will be right back you can see that so this is a blank code and uh, we have just learned that how to install the library into the arduino id so now we, we will see that how to select the board and how to upload the code into the arduino board so you can see that this is the arduino board this is the arduino board and i have connected it to my pc using this using this cable data cable so i'm going to select this board and this is the board i have to select if i'm using the arduino mega then i have to select this arduino mega so now i am using arduino you know so i have selected the arduino you know. so next part is the port selection i have two ports here but my port is com56 if i will remove it you can see that it will not show this com port so if i will connect again the com port has been detected now i'm going to upload the code so this is basically uh, compilation uh, icon means uh, it is a testing of a code if you will write some code and you want to test that uh, whether it has a error or not then uh, you have to click on that but now i'm going to upload the code so this is the upload button so you can directly upload your code from here also and there is one uh, option here in sketch to upload the code and for compilation so these are the short key given here so i am going to upload this this is a blank code i am uploading it may take some time the code has been successfully uploaded and after uploading the code you will get this message done uploading if there is some error then it will show the error here this is the window okay so we have seen how to upload the code how to select the com port how to select the board then uh, how to install the library in this arduino id part so with this we have just finish our software part so if you guys have any questions related to this hardware part or software part then uh, you can mention these questions into the comment section we will see this question and uh, provide the answers in uh, our q and a sessions the so next part we will cover is the interfacing part so basically very interesting part of this workshop means we have to uh, check that uh, how to interface any sensor with the arduino we have to uh, uh, 
uh, you will get the idea how to connect uh, how to make the connection of uh, uh, of any sensor with the arduino then uh, how to code it then is there any uh, anything required to make the coding uh, related to the sensor so we will see this so we'll take 5 minutes break for setup purpose and we'll start again so guys uh, welcome back to this workshop now uh, we will start with our interfacing part so before going to the interfacing part uh, we just understand the basic concept of the programming here you can see that i have just mentioned the arduino programming is divided into three parts first one is the define second one is a void setup and third one is a void loop so which those pinners uh, miss the pins you are use, using in your project so you have to mention these pins in a defined part suppose uh, as i have told you that there are 14 digital input output pins and six analog pins and uh, here you are connecting two analog uh, inputs and uh, one digital output so you have to mention those pins in this defined section so i am going to show you the one basic program of this arduino that is blinking led so i have just used this defined led 1 13 i have defined this 13 number pin as a variable of led 1 uh, so it can be written as a hash defined the second part is void setup so in this void setup we have to declare the mode of the uh, components suppose you are using two sensor as a input and one sensor is a uh, one uh, module is as a output so you have to mention that two sensors are the input using this pin mode command and you have to mention the one out, uh, module is a output so i have just declared that pin number 13 as a output using this command pin mode 13 comma output and this is the third part that is a void loop this is the main part where you can return your write your pro, uh, projects and you have to return the uh, commands and logic here so it can be write that digital write if you are using the digital pin then you have to use the digital write if you are using the analog pin then you can return as a analog write if you want to print in a serial window if you want to print in a uh, Uh, LCD. Then you have to read, uh, write all the program in this void loop. What is meant by loop? If you want to run your program uh, in a loop, then use this command. So we just start with the first project that is blinking LED using a Arduino Uno. So this is the Arduino Uno I have. This is the cable I have selected. And now I'm going to connect it with the PC. This is a blank code I have. This code is readily available, but I will show you how to code it. So as I have told you, I have to define the pin first. So I am writing it that hash define LED as a variable and pin number thirteen. Okay. in number 13 it is a says uh, sorry case uh, sensitive so you have to return uh, like this only these are the predefined command by the arduino id so so i have declared the pin number now i have to declare whether it is a input or output so basically this pin works as a input uh, sorry output so i am going to write it into the void setup now this is the output so i am declaring it pin mode 13 comma output if i am going to use any sensor then i will mention here pin number comma input and semicolon is compulsory now i am writing it uh, its logic and its commands in void loop section void loop so i'm writing digital write
13 comma high means i am giving the high pulse to this 13 number pins so i am going to upload this selected the com uh, com port 56 and board id you know and uploading the code if you want to save then you can save it it will take some time for compiling first uh, it is compiling it is checking that whether it, it has error and definitely i will get uh, error because i have used the full stop here instead of comma now i'm correcting it see i was getting error because i was used the uh, full stop now i will i have corrected it and again uploading the code The code has been successfully uploaded. Now you can see that this is a 13 number LED. It's glowing. Okay. So I will upload the one more program into that. Now I want to upload the code of a blinky. Now it's a, uh, it is getting continuously high pulse. That's why it is uh, the LED is on. So now I am doing the code of blinking. So after getting the high pulse, I will give uh, the delay of one second. So that uh, for one second my LED will be on. After one second it will be off, and it uh, this uh, is running repeatedly. So I am giving the delay of one second. Microcontroller don't know about this, uh, don't understand the value of seconds, so we have to mention it in a millisecond. So I'm giving it 1000 millisecond, semicolon, then again I'm writing digital write 13 comma low pulse. Again, giving delay of one second. So, this is the blinking code. For one second, it will be on. For one second, it will be off. So, now I'm going to upload the code. 13 comma yes. It will take some time guys, just wait for a few seconds, it is already compiling the sketch, okay I'm, I, I got some error here, 
now to just check that what is the error okay just a minute Okay, it is a spelling mistake. Sorry. No, again I am uploading the code. And definitely it will run this code now. So uh, this means that you have this is very uh, case sensitive and you have to write each and every uh, command, each and every uh, pin numbers uh, in a correct way. To upload the code successfully. Uh, see, guys, the code has been uploaded successfully. You can see that done uploading, and uh, here is the output of this code. See, the code is blinking after one second. So we have just done with the first blink code and this is the main code or main code for the beginner. So now we will see some interesting projects. We have already done the coding in our projects. So we will show that what we have done in that projects. So let's start with the first project control servo motor with Arduino Uno. So you can see that we have used the SG90 servo motor and uh, this is the connections we have given the signal it requires the RC signal and uh, this is a VCC and ground we have connected to the VCC and ground pin of the servo motor and signal has been connected to the digital 9 pin, nine number pin okay so I will open the code of this I'm just opening the code. So this is the code. You can see that the servo motor I have declared it S1 and it is connected to nine number pins. And uh, basically we have given the angle for the servo motor. Firstly, we have given the zero degree then after one second delay, we have given it 180 degree. So we will see the output of this project now. Okay. So it has been connected. Code was already uploaded here. Okay, the code was the different one. That, that is in that uh, we have operated 0 degree, 90 degree and 180 degree. So I will upload this code 0 to 180 degree once again. Now it is operated in 0 degree, 90 degree and 180 degree. I have just uploaded this code 0 degree to 180 degree. Mm, just a minute, I am getting some error. Okay, regarding the COM port. Okay, here the COM port has been changed and it's a COM35. Now it will be successfully. This is the 180 servo, uh, servo con uh, motor. You will get uh, same in a 360 degree also, this motor. So the code has been successfully uploaded and you can see that this is a zero degree and this is the 180 degree. So it is operated from zero degree to 180 degree. So you can make the changes in your code if you want to operate it at a 60 degree, then 90 degree, then 30 degree. So you can make the changes in this loop section. 
the microcontroller will perform according to the commands and according to the logics you are given in the loop section so we have done with our first projects and it's a very simple project so you can try with this project next project we will see that object detection using ir sensor basically uh, ir is a infrared sensor uh, which emits the infrared light and uh, there is one transmitter and receiver transmitter emits that light and uh, whenever there is any obstacle coming between that light then it will reflect back and receiver will capture that and according to this principle it will detect the object so in this connection you can see that we have use this ir sensor and it is connected to the digital pin d2 and vcc and ground is given here and uh, for object detector uh, for object after after object detection we have just shown uh, the led to power up when the object will be detected this is the port is given to adjust the sensitivity of this ir sensor see the connection is given vcc ground and digital signal now we will open the code basically all code of this uh, projects is already uploaded in our board i am just showing you the code here only this is the object good detection this is the ir sensor you can see that this is the transmitter this is the receiver okay and range of the sensor is very low you can see oh. okay so i have just connected this uh, led to the pin number 12 now we will see the output of this ir sensor Yet I have connected to my PC, so it is powered up. Now uh, there is nothing in front of this IR sensor, so it is not detecting anything. But if I will show some obstacle, it will detect. Again, I will remove it. It will detect. so basically it is used for the detection pur purpose the real time application uh, of this sensor is uh, that you can make it in a hand sanitizer automatic hand hand sanitizer in covid uh, in uh, co covid time uh, there you have seen the automatic sanitizer uh, uh, automatic hand sanitizer and uh, which has been made using this ir sensor only okay so we have just done with the uh i got uh, one question that is there any library available for to replicate basic functionality of tata sky stb remote uh actually sorry to inform you amit but i really don't know about that i have just shared that word first time tata sky stb remote so i have to check that and i will uh, let you know in the uh, comment section thanks for uh, your question so the next project we will see that lcd interfacing with arduino you know. basically uh, here i have used the normal i2c lcd if you go for the uart lcd then you you have to do the more connection because you can see that here these are the connections of a normal lcd see these are the pins of the normal lcd so i have just used the i2c lcd which comes with this i2c module 
the basic purpose of this i2c model is to minimize the connection of anything and uh, it will operate with the four pin only uh, it is a scl sda serial clock and serial data and vcc ground so uh, you want to use the normal lcd you can then you can use the normal lcd on our website you will get a tutorial for the normal lcd as well but for uh, minimizing the connection i have used the lcd uh, i2c lcd so we will see this project now basically uh, here we have connect the sd and scl which already comes with this pin sd and scl pin now just simply connect this sd to sd and scl to scl now we will open the code of this lcd interfacing the webshare lcd that's why i have installed uh, the library webshare library see webshare lcd 1602 rgb.th and for wire connection we have to install the wire library library into the code if you will use a normal lcd means a uh, normal liquid crystal lcd then you can you have to download or you have to install the normal liquid crystal library for the code so now you can see that Uh, it has been mentioned 16 by 2 because i am using 16 by 2 lcd in that you can see that 16 characters are in a single line and two lines are used so we have initialized the lcd here and uh, in a first line we have mentioned the robo dot in as a message and uh, next time uh, in a first string we have mentioned happy and in the second string uh, we have mentioned the arduino day so we can see the output how it works now guys these are the very basic codes we are uh, telling you so that you can use this tutorial and you can make your projects you can start your projects from these tutorials so already code has been uploaded so you can see the output here see it is reflecting the message from robo.in to all arduino users happy arduino day so we can print your uh, different message also i will show you how to print suppose uh, i'm mentioning welcome arduino workshop Welcome to Arduino Workshop. Then you can see the code is com thirty five selected and uploaded the code. getting some error regarding this just a minute okay it takes only 16 character so just a minute hmm now we can see guys i am getting some issue with this library so i have to check that what is the exact issue with this but uh, you can change the message
again i will try last time otherwise we will move to the move on to the next project Yes, there is some issue with this library. Uh, okay, this library is not installed in my laptop because the code has been done in the other laptop. If I will install this library, then it will work. So next, next project. Okay, this is the. Sorry, these are the not name of this. Okay, fire alert using Arduino you know so guys you can see that uh, I have used here one flame sensor okay and uh, this is the buzzer I have used there are basic uh, connections here this flame sensor is also one kind of analog sensor so we have connected it to the analog a0 pin you can connect this sensor to any analog pins but according to the analog pins you have to make the changes in your code and uh, buzzer i have just connected as output to the d13 signal pin i will open the code for this See, uh, I have just connected to the buzzer as a pin number 12. Sorry, in uh, PPT, I have mentioned it as a 13. So I have corrected it. So you can see that the uh, buzzer pin is mentioned as a 12 number pin. Uh, flame uh, flame is mentioned to the A0 actually this is the full code we have taken but uh, some sensors are coming with the two pins uh, three pins and some sensors are come with the four pins so I have uh, this uh, four pin sensor and I have just used the analog pin of this sensor so if you want to use then you can use the digital pin as well so we have just given the buzzer value whenever the flame is detected then what will be the buzzer value and when flame is not detected then buzzer will be the off so we have you can see that in uh, in this world loop we have just mentioned that serial println means uh, serial dot println means if uh, fire is detected then it will show the message on serial window here, here is the serial monitor just a minute i have just, just connect the serial port here first So it has been detected. Now I will open this serial monitor. You can see, guys, this is the buzzer and this is the flame sensor. See, you can hear the sound of buzzer when fire is detected. Statements. And you can see that message. Now the flame is not detected, so it is showing the message for the flame. If the, the flame is detected, you can see the message near the flame. So this is the basic fire alert project using Arduino. You can make it as a real time project also and uh, you can use it in a, a fire alert uh, miss in industry as well if uh, 
there is a high chances of fire then you can use this project in that section so the next yeah we have just completed three to four projects here just uh, in comment section let us know uh, do you know uh, is there any uh, other interesting projects basic projects we can do with the arduino just share the list uh, with us in a comment section so the next project is distance measurement using ultrasonic sensor now guys you can see that we have just used the one module to connect with the arduino you can see that uh, previously we have used the this uh, lcd and uh, now we are using the ultrasonic sensor with lcd so whenever the ultrasonic sensor will detect someone or will uh, measure the sound distance of any object then it will show on the lcd so one thing we have learned uh, we can show the output on serial uh, monitor but if you want to use the lcd then you can see the output on the lcd as well here also we have used the i2c lcd to minimize the connections you can use the normal lcd also you, uh, there is a i2c module connected behind this lcd so these are the connection vcc are connected to the vcc ground is to ground sda to sda serial clock to serial clock and uh, this d2 and d3 are the equant trigger pin so what is equant trigger pin basically uh, this is one kind of transmitter and receiver pin so this is the ultrasonic sensor it works with the ultrasonic or sound frequency okay it works with the sound frequency uh, it when it will operate then it transmits some sound waves and where there is a object in front of that then this sound waves bombard on that object and reflect back to the receiver pins so according to that there is some calculations and it will calculate the distance so we will see that how it works this is the basic this is a 20 by 4 uh, lcd um, is in single line there will be the 20 characters and you can use the four lines here so this is a 20 by 4 yes, uh, lcd you can use 16 by 2 also and similarly i2c lcd is here uh, this is the normal lcd this is not a web share brand lcd so you can see that the i2c module is connected at the back side of this lcd this sensor is similar to the ir sensor but uh, it works with the sound wave and ir sensor works with the uh, infrared waves and range uh, range of the sensor is more than the ir sensor and uh, also ir sensor uh, sorry ultrasonic sensor detects some uh, detects object in some angle position but uh, in ir sensor it will detect the object in a straight line position only so this is the uh, sen uh, ultrasonic sensor interfacing with the Arduino and LCD. Now we will see the code and output. You can see the GIF here. Just a minute. I got one questions question. Which okay, Robu. Sorry, smart student attendance system. Yes, yes, you can make it smart student attendance system. Yes, you have to use the. RFID uh, system for that RFID boards, then tags, so that you can enroll the uh, RFID tag for each student. Then, what are those calculations? Can you explain? Uh, yes, actually, these are the uh, distance and time calculations. Uh, they have it works with the sound wave frequency. So we have to mention about the uh, that the timing of sound waves. So I will show you the calculations. Don't worry. I will open the code for distance measurement using ultrasonic sensor. See, it's already open. Yes. See, you can see that uh, here uh, in previous code, you in LCD code, I have mentioned the library of WebShare. but now i am using the normal lcd so i have used this library liquid liquid crystal uh, underscore i2c.th 
if it is not i to c then it will be the normalized uh, normal library you will get all this library from github you have to just download it and install as per the process we have learned earlier so this is a 20 by 4 is uh, lcd 20 characters and four lines we have defined the trigger pin here trigger pin 6 and uh, sorry 7 and echo pin 6 so i have mentioned uh, the other pins here but uh, we can change it in code as well so now you can see that we have declared trigger pin as output and echo pin as a input means trigger pin uh, transmits the wave and echo pin receives that wave lcd cursor has been defined to the 00 position when the target is detected it will show the uh, message target detected or target distance from the uh, on the uh, lcd screen so you can see see these are the calculations here how to calculate the distance basically uh, it uh, distance is calculated by the time uh, taken by the uh, sound waves uh, to detect some object and according to this uh, time we have to calculate the distance so we have mention here duration divided by 2 divided by 29.1 it is a uh, standard time for sound wave so i will show you what is the speed of sound wave uh, it is uh, around just a minute i will show you yeah uh, yeah duration is equals to pulse uh, and echo pin comma high distance equals to duration divided by 2 and divided by 29.1 this is the formula given basically it is the time required for the sound wave traveling now see uh, we will see the output to adjust it guys according to the camera okay are you able to see this okay so this is the sensor now we will detect some object see you can see that distance is changing okay just a minute i have to adjust it okay okay yeah i'm not able to see the screen but i hope you are getting the exact value see the distance is changing okay so you have learned how to interface two things into arduino as per this process you can uh, interface multiple sensor with the arduino and you, you will see the output in the display of that multiple sensor so we have just finished with this okay now we will see the next project this is a touch dimmer switch circuit using arduino uh in this uh, project we have used this touch sensor module it is available directly so this is basically electronics module and uh, these are the touch area so according to your touch it will generate the output 
so to see the output we have just connected the lcd here and uh, we are using this as a dimmer so we have just may uh, miscode it uh, like that when we will touch it it will uh, increase the sensitivity of the uh, led and when again we will touch it then increase uh, it will decrease the sensitivity of the brightness of the led and it will decrease the brightness of the sorry it will yes increase and decrease the brightness of the led so you can check the connections vcc is connected to vcc ground is to ground and signal of this touch sensor is connected to the d9 d9 pin of this arduino this is a digital signal and the led is connected to the d7 so i have just used this resistor because uh, i am using the uh, 10 mm led and uh, there is chances of a high current so we have just used the resistor here so now we will open the code for this so in this code we have mentioned the sensor as a pin number 8 i will correct it in the uh, ppt as well so you can check that pin mode sensor is declared as a input and led is declared as a output and uh, digital write uh, sensor is at the first stage it has been mentioned that we have initialized the first stage of this sensor and led means it will be off whenever we will connect it it will be off at the first start uh, means first initializing so that's why it is mentioned in the void setup now we can see that we here we have write the code when we will touch then it started from the range value means uh, we have given the pwm value here so it can increase the brightness and uh, it can decrease the brightness of the led so we'll see the demonstration of this project so this is a circuit we have done here you can see that this is a little bit complex circuit this is a touch sensor so i'm adjusting it this is a touch sensor and this is the 10 mm led i have just used it all the connections i have uh, told you earlier and uh, uh, we have mentioned in the code as well guys if uh, the connections are changed means uh, in uh, ppt you will get some other connect uh, pin number and in code you will get an other pin number then you have to just change it and you can change uh, you can use any pin according to your uh, use so now i am going to connect it see the sensor i am going to provide the touch just a minute so just a minute it was working i have to check that what is the issue that you have any other led i'm check okay the connection is loose so pin number 8 Uh, there is issue with the connection only so we can see the output see it's turning we think some connection is here
sorry to say guys but uh, we are getting some issue with uh, this project so we will sh uh, show you the video again so before wasting the time uh, sorry uh, without wasting a time we will move on to the next project our team will check what is the, uh, what is the issue with this project the next project is ldr interfacing with electronic uh, sorry arduino you know so this is basically our last project and uh, you can see that it is a very simple project i have connected the ldr module here you can connect uh, the separate ldr also here and uh, whenever there is a darkness it will operate the led these are the basic uh, principle of the ldr module so you can check the connections vcc ground and digital signal pins uh, sorry yes it's a digital signal pin we have just connected to the pin number yes uh, 9 and the led is connected to the pin number 8 so we will see the output So we have just changed the pin number here and declare LDR pin as input and LED as output. Then uh, you can just check that uh, when LDR pin is equal to one, means is uh, when it is high, then LED is high, and when uh, otherwise LED will be low. Means uh, when you will get a uh, LDR will get a signal, then. the led will be high means it will be on otherwise it will be off this is a simple code we have used and uh, here we have used a serial print ln also so you can see this i'm going to connect this see this is a ldr module has been powered up now okay are you able to see that okay so you can see the output when there is a no lights on this ldr module it will show you the output led is high see it is on it will work like a photodiode uh, pay a working principle uh, real time application using this uh, sensor is already implemented in many countries uh means whenever there will be the darkness then uh, street lights is automatically on so in that ldr sensor is used see there is the there is a darkness and led is already on so you can use this project as a basic level and if you want to make it iot based then you can use the other components required for the iot based but you can use uh, make this project as a real time also so we have just uh, finished with this interfacing part uh, the previous code we have just recovered it and you can see the output here it is already connected and uh, this is the brightness control are you able to see that just take the output okay stimulate okay see the brightness is increasing see you can see here yeah, i like this now
see it is brightness is decreasing again we will try this it is increasing and again it is decreasing so we can control uh, the brightness of led using this touch sensor this is a demonstration of the touch sensors uh, circuit switch with arduino so we have just finished with our all the projects and i hope you find it interesting and uh, you have learned many things throughout this project so if you know about any real time projects or do you uh, do you want to see any any other interesting projects then uh, please share the name with us because we will definitely try to make such videos and such content for uh, for you guys and uh, we'll share this content very soon so i have just finished with my workshop here the last part is q and a session so i will check your questions and try to answer it we got one question uh, from amit that where we can get the list of all arduino modules and boards uh, amit uh, you can directly website to the arduino website and uh, where you will get all the boards names and uh, their specifications you will get the data sheets and information related to the uh, all arduino uh, family also you can directly visit our robo.in website uh, we all we are Indian distributor of Arduino board, so we are dealing with number of Arduino original models. So you can directly website to our website, uh, visit to our website also for this board information. Uh, someone has asked the questions why we need to use I two C communications. Basically, uh, I two C communication uh, is easy way to use than UART and SPI communications. because uh, in uart you have to use multiple wires if you are going to connect the uart communication then uh, if you use the spi communication then there in that there will be the one master and multiple slaves but uh, if you use the i2c communication then um, you can minimize the number of wire and uh, there will be the multiple masters and multiple slaves so you can operate the multiple things using multiple uh, sensors and uh, multiple uh, modules so you can use the i2c communications is uh, the i2c interface is used to send the data to the lcd display controller yes prathamesh uh, we can use the i2c communication to send the data to the lcd con controller but that lcd controller should have the i2c inbuilt because all the lcd doesn't have the i2c some lcd has a normal communication but uh, so some featured as, uh, lcd has only the i2c communication can we use any other communication protocol yes you can use other communication protocols also if uh, that sensor has a uart then you can go for the uart if that sensor prefer for the spi then you can go for the spi so for you uh, easiness i have just used the i2c communications but uh, if i will use a normal lcd then i can use a normal communication but the uh, number of wires has been increased you can see the lcd just show me the lcd normal lcd so you can see that uh, this is the normal lcd this is the normal lcd if i will use the normal communication then i have to make this all connections uh, i have to make this all connections and if you want to uh, use that connection then you will get a uh, tutorial for this lcd interfacing on our uh, website also but just minimize the connection i have used this i2c model lcd How does ultrasonic sensor work? 
basically it works on the sound frequency uh, means uh, there are trigger and echo pins means transmitters and receiver so whenever uh, uh, you will interact with the arduino then sound waves has been uh, transferred and uh, there if there is a obstacle then that sound waves bombard on that obstacle and reflect back to the receiver part that echo part and uh, according to that distance will be calculated because uh, when it calculates the time travel by that waves to uh, towards to the object so and uh, we know about the standard uh, time of sound waves and according to that we can calculate the distance yes you can use a digital pin as a input and output but make sure that the input the sensor or the model you are using it should be input uh, it should be supported for the digital because if you are going to use the ultrasonic sensor and if you are thinking that we can connect it to the digital pin then it is not possible because it generates the analog output so you have to connect it with the analog pin only yes uh, usb interfacing is possible with arduino and yes it works with the latest c interface also uh, i think you have not seen it amit but i have just shown you the arduino nano board which uh, comes with the c type usb only so you can directly interface the type c also in the arduino board how many i2c device can connect for now you can connect only one i2c board that is because two pins are given here sd and scl so you can use it can i use ur to send the data to lcd yes you can use the uh, ur to send the data to lcd as well but uh, that lcd will be different because uh, there are small lcd oled type lcd which communicates with the ur uh, functions actually arduino you know has only one port for the i think uh, there are only two pins for the i2c so you can here connect only uh, one display but uh, if you are going to use the mega board that it comes with the two uh, ports uh, sorry two pins for i2c communications then you can uh, interface both display here okay guys uh, please let us know the questions uh, you have uh, because uh, we are now going to end our uh, stream so before ending if you have any other questions please let us know can i deploy machine learning uh, models on arduino Uh, yes ram you can deploy it but uh, not on arduino you know uh, as i have already told you there are mk mk advanced family is there uh, and uh, nano rp2040 also so you can imply your machine learning uh, using that model not with the arduino you know surendra kumar so wire library can be used to make any pin i2c no wire library is not used for the i2c connection it is a uh, it is basically used for the connection it is not specifically for the i2c it is for the normal wire connections okay guys i hope uh, you will get uh, the answer for uh, for all your questions and uh, don't worry if the stream is ending then uh, it doesn't mean that uh, you will not get get the answer for your further questions you can uh, post your question on the comment section then uh, we will try to answer on the comment section after ending this video and uh, yes we will share the ppt and we will share the codes of this arduino in our uh, youtube channel okay so guys thanks for your cooperation